guys, pineapples. Welcome to the Juicy Tidbits Podcast, where my mission is to energize you, your team, and your sweet results. I'm your host, Christine Trippi, Chief Fun Officer here at The Wise Pineapple. Today, my amazing guest star is Brandon Johnson, otherwise known as the Positive Energy Guy. I don't have enough time today to tell you all the things that Brandon is, especially to me, but here is a little soundbite for you. Brandon is a grateful husband and father, student of life, speaker, trainer, author of the amazing book, Hospitality from the Heart, and he has been named the global guru number one and two for hospitality in the past five years straight. When you hear me say energy times execution equals results, I learned that from Brandon along with so many other things. And I mentioned Brandon in my book a number of times. I am profoundly grateful to be his friend and have him as a mentor. Please help me welcome my friend and adventure buddy, Brandon Johnson. Hello, Brandon. Hey, Trippy. <laughs> How you doing, my friend? Absolutely outstanding. Absolutely as, outstanding. Especially as, with the, when you added in the audio applause. Are you kidding me? Doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> because energy is everything, right? <laughs> exactly. Energy is truly everything. Truly everything. I am so excited to introduce you to my wise pineapples because I love you so much and so much of me came from you. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I'm just so excited to do this. So thank you for being here to help me energize all of our hardworking leaders out there. Absolutely. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm honored. I'm blessed to be here, my friend. Oh, thank you so much. Um, now, you've been such an incredible influence in my life. I want to know who has been that influence for you? Say one, one of the three people who has been that main impact. Like I think of people who influence me and you are number one on that list. Oh, thank you. Um, I, knew that. I mean, there's uh, it, it, for me, it, it, there's there's the the live human beings that that have been an influence uh, mm -hmm. on my journey. Uh, and one of those big ones would be would uh, definitely been Famous Dave Anderson, mm -hmm. uh, Famous Dave's Barbecue, in regards to just me transitioning from a young general manager of a, uh, of a restaurant into working with Famous Dave's and then being in the corporate office and then doing trainings and stuff mm -hmm. around Dave. He was an absolute influence. And he introduced me to so many other what I call mentors for myself, which were authors, mm -hmm. speaker, trainer people. Um, right. The Zig Ziglar's, the Jim Rohn's, the the Tony Robbins of the world, all mm -hmm. of those people had such a profound influence on my journey. Um, mm -hmm. To now, I mean, a lot of my mentors are right behind me uh, mm -hmm. on the bookshelf. Yes. Uh, and so I'm one of those people that believes that you can get that from books, you can get it from podcasts, you can get it you can you can learn so much uh, mm -hmm. from other people out there. And the cool thing is, is they can. Every human uh, is teaching us a lesson. Whether you like that human or not, doesn't matter. There's still lessons to be learned. Yes. And so one of the big things I've learned from anybody I've been around is just just open mind, open heart, and, and be willing to learn and be that student of life and mm -hmm. leadership and happiness and all of that stuff. Because that's really where some of the answers are. Um, I've just come to, to learn that in life, there isn't a way to live life. There is uh, or the way there is a way and, and mm -hmm. you learn from it that day and you adapt to how you want to improve on it the next day. Um, just not losing that spirit of uh, what's my uh, curiosity. I just, I love that word. I love people <gasps> just, you know, I come across my, my, I have a daughter that's 17 and, and she, Oh my God, is Emma 17? Yes. She's 17. <laughs> and she's an awesome human uh, around that, which is yes. awesome. Um, but just to see her and my little Zachary, I call him little, but he's 14. Um, mm -hmm. their curiosity on life and just asking questions and all of that. I mean, that's one of the greatest gifts we can give, not just to family members, but to the teams that we're leading is mm -hmm. to be that curious leader on a daily basis all the time. Never, never stop the learning, continuing to do it. Uh, now don't take that to the extreme where you, you're not applying the learning, um, right. apply it. But then keep doing that because that rubs off on the entire team, especially in today's world where there is a lot of challenges left and right and up and down. And uh, you never know what's going to happen in today's world. Uh, yeah. And when you are a student of life, um, you one of the mantras that Jim Rohn taught me many, many moons ago, he said, turn your frustration into fascination. Mm -hmm. And that 
one of the many quotes that has always stuck with me that whenever I would get frustrated leading the team or uh, a bad guest experience or customer experience mm -hmm. all the time, I would say, how can I be fascinated by this right now versus frustrated? Cause that is a shift of energy completely. Uh, and you get your brain shifted from looking for excuses and blaming and reasons why this is happening versus what am I going to do about it? Cause that's, that's all that anybody really cares about anyway. Uh, and so just figuring out how you can do that for yourself is, is incredibly, incredibly impactful, not only for you and your energy, but that your, helps out everybody else around your you. customer, your guests and the people who are watching you. Cause again, exactly. people are learning from you every day. And I love that. Let me say that again to, for everyone just to take back that with, take that back with them. A uh, great huddle topic for everyone. Um, rather than being frustrated with the situation, how can we be fascinated with the situation? Yeah. Yeah. And again, that takes you from blame to, or what I like to call it from victim to Viking. Absolutely. And, and also from negative to positive. Yep. And if you can take every interaction that frustrates you and turn it into fascination, man, you're going to have a great day. Yeah. I yeah, love and, that. And the greatest thing is, is it's not just <laughs> professional. I mean, you take it into raising your kids, your significant other relationships, yeah. your friends. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. politics. Hello. Hello. Uh, <laughs> anything else out there in the world? I mean, you just, you just, some of the stuff that you see on the media and all that kind of stuff, I just, I'm fascinated by it because it's like, there's no reason to get frustrated because there's really, that doesn't, that does not dictate how and, or how I'm going to show up that day because I'm still going to be me. I'm still going to take care of myself and my family and, and, and the people that I have a chance to serve and be around. Um, yep. cause that's really what makes the, the impact anyway. Well, it's so funny that you said that you love being curious because my next question for you was, what are you curious about right now? Is that so funny? Yeah. <laughs> you that <up> perfect. <laughs> you did. Well, energy is everything trippy. Like I yep. said, and you can feel, you can sense and, and all of that kind of stuff. So uh -huh. I, what I'm curious about now, I, you know, um, I, I'm I'm big into financial independence uh, because mm -hmm. I, I'm a big believer in dreaming uh, big for your life and your career, and then creating the life that you desire um, by financially taking care of yourself and your family. So I spend a lot of time listening to podcasts and reading books on on that element of things um, instead of just uh, depending on somebody else to take care of me and my family um, that way. Um, not that that's wrong. It's just, uh, I'd like to, right. to have some, some say and some understanding in regards to where, mm -hmm. where our lives are going. Um, and I love the freedom of that. Um, yes. and I've been learning a lot from Brandon about financial independence because he is a sharer of knowledge as well. And uh, again, uh, back to the curious thing and what you were just talking about is a number of the guests that I'm having are from other industries. And I'm doing that intentionally because I love to become the best at what I do by looking at other industries. Absolutely. And one of our guests is uh, my cousin, actually, Andy Trippy. He's a financial advisor. And he, um, I, I don't know if at the time of this airing, he will have been on already or after. Sure, sure. But, um, but you can look forward to that. And again, yeah, curious and looking at other industries for ways we can improve what we do every day. And I, yeah. I learned, I learned, so much from the Savannah Bananas baseball team. <laughs> <laughs> They're amazing. So yeah, again, be curious about, about all things. Yeah. And because it just, and it keeps you young too. It, yeah. it, it keeps the, it keeps the mind going. Um, yeah. Cause what I've found, and I think many of us as humans found in the last year and a half of uh, COVID time that the, the, this thing here is a dangerous place, uh, yeah. a significantly dangerous place that, uh, well, the brain has one job and one job only, and that's to keep you safe and comfortable. And it will do everything in its power to do that. And mm -hmm. so if you're not out exploring and doing and, and testing new things and, and interacting with humans and all that kind of stuff, you're, you, you, you start to overanalyze, overthink, uh, and you start to lose the heart, uh, the feeling side mm -hmm. of things. And all of a sudden, every element of performance in your life starts to deteriorate. And so I'm, I'm just excited that the that uh, many of the mandates are, are lowering and things are opening back up. And yes. I mean, it's just, it's like I go into a store and I feel like I, I feel like I'm, you know, like <laughs> it's the law. I'm breaking the law. I know. Uh, I yeah, was in the hospital energy. last week and uh, I saw that it was optional if you're vaccinated. So I'm like, ah, oh. yeah, yeah. 
I'm, I'm, such, I'm such a tough guy. I'm such, just, oh yeah. yeah. And then I'm walking around going, uh huh. Look yeah. at my face. You yeah. can see my smile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, when we talk about energy is everything, I mean, the last year and a half, I think all of us as humans have missed smiles. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it, it, I think some people that, that were not good smilers before uh, may have formed some really bad habits of like facial expressions when somebody would say something. Right. <laughs> They're going to have to recorrect that. It's, no, it's like, no. oh, the mask is not hiding that anymore. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, Brandon, you are a frequent traveler, especially you cross the country uh, doing your trainings and, and keynote speaking and whatnot, as well as we are adventure buddies. So we've been to a number of countries together. Yeah. I love our positive energy group. Um, as a frequent traveler, I want to I want to ask you this for all of our hoteliers out there. Yeah. What makes you feel pre uh, appreciated as an elite guest when you stay at a hotel? What's that one thing that really makes you feel appreciated aside from having beer in your room? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you have a barrel aged imperial stout in my room, oh my god. Oh I'm my never god. Going, I'm never going anywhere else. They're um, a 10 on that. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it, it sometimes it's the non-human stuff of just the the pride uh, of the, the from driving in. I, I'm an energy thing, an energy guy, and it's energy is not just the human interaction, which is definitely critically important. Mm -hmm. um, but it's walking in the cleanliness, the organization. If I see a staff member picking up garbage, just doing. There's a pride level. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Yeah, one hundred percent. And you, uh, we, you I always, uh, yeah. well, one of our um, huddles that I used to do all the time was, whose job is it to to make the hotel clean? And the answer is, it's everyone's Everyone. job. Yeah, exactly. And we talk about, you know, if if we if a, a guest drives into the parking lot and there's litter all over or cigarette butts everywhere, what are they thinking to think about what the bathroom Absolutely. looks like or the sheets look like? So yeah. everything matters. Yes. And so I love that. That's first impressions. That's yeah. awesome. And then obviously just the human interaction, the the front staff, uh, just how they treat people and look at people, make eye contact. If there is a few other people, it's just it, that little eye contact of, hey, I'll be with you in just a few minutes. You know, those little yeah. things of just, we're one of the things in, in my book that I've always taught is, is that people are not starving for more information. They're starving for connection. And yeah. especially the last 18 months, we're starving for getting back to natural connection. And yeah. the cool thing is, is the standard of connection is actually lowered. I think people are, the expectations aren't nearly as high. So when we do go and to that extraordinary level, my level mm -hmm. five, oh my God, you're blowing yeah. the socks off of everybody. People are going to be like, what just happened to me? <laughs> yeah, and people are like, well, man, that's hard to do. And that, no, it's not. You're, you're just yeah. being a good human. And right. you simplify it by that. Now, if you have these 8,000 things that you need to do daily. Yeah. You're making it harder for your staff and your team members to actually do that. Let them be human. Let them be themselves and, and trust huge word there. Trust, trust. That, that they're doing what it is that you expect from them. And you know what? They're going to be a lot more creative and they're going to connect with the guests a hell of a lot more, heck of a mm -hmm. lot more. Uh, when you allow that freedom of, they don't feel controlled. They feel like entrepreneurs because you're releasing them and you're right. allowing them to shine. And that's a whole, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the difference of a hotel um, and or restaurant and or other hospitality venue um, and or any store, you know, whether or not those employees are being controlled or they're being influenced in a positive way by a great leader. Right. Autonomy is one of the number one uh, retainers for associates and they feel like they are uh, a leader. Yeah, you're, you're not just an associate that has to do this checklist. You're Absolutely. a leader to lead. Yep. Um, uh, that is huge. And Daniel Pink's book, yep. um, Drive, Drive. Is so yep. great on that. I love Daniel Pink. Yeah. Uh, it's great, I, great guy. I mean, that that book has uh, been a big influence. I mean, the biggest mm -hmm. thing I took from that book and still remember is just how do you amp your employees or staff members up? It is the autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you, you work with your staff on that. You give them the autonomy. You allow them the mastery of as far as, hey, who do you want to be? Where, what position do you want to grow to? I mean, give them How the do you get there? Yeah. Here's some tools to get yeah. there. Let me help you get there. 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately the purpose, why are they there? What, what does our company stand for as far as values and how we show up every day and just make sure that those values aren't something that's just on a wall. If you're not living the values that are on your wall, then change the freaking thing that's on the wall. Exactly. Change the words, change the values and get it back to who it is that you are that differentiates you. And then just do those things really, really, really extraordinary. Well, and people will keep coming back because it's like, that doesn't happen in today's world anymore. Mm-hmm, I hear you. Well, I mentioned your workshop. Your workshop, um, lead, I was, it was called Life Skills for me. It's Leadership from the Heart now, right? Uh, and actually, it's evolved to Heart of a Leader. Yeah, no, thank, you, thank you. I, I knew that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Heart of a Leader. I just, I always remember it the way I took oh, it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's absolutely one of the most impactful trainings I've ever done. I love this training so much. It's a two day intense training. Um, I remember the, um, the waiver I had to sign scared the hell out of me, (laughs) but I still have the pledge. Yeah. I'm going to do the pledge challenge right now. Yeah. (laughs) From this day forward, I have made my choice to lead, not follow, to create, not destroy, I will make a difference. I am a leader. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the, the only shift little thing in there is just, I oh. will, I will versus the two, to lead. I will lead, not follow. Oh, that's what will. You yeah, it's the same thing. It's okay. the same thing. Yeah. Um, I love it. A lot, yeah, I like that. Just, I will better. I like the, I will better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's like that, that. It's the, there's a, any the, the power of language, power yeah. of language, which is something that uh, I didn't appreciate uh, when I was younger. And that's why I, I make sure that that is a, a teaching point is that when you, when you speak from an I will or an I am place, that is full ownership, full responsibility. Yeah. Yep. Um, and that is a, a, a place in your career and in life that you create a lot of freedom for yourself because again, mm-hmm. there's no, there's no excuses. There, you, you're, you are responsible for where you're at right now, everything in your life, where your career's at right now is the choices that you made up to this point. Your relationship right now with your significant other is exactly because of the choices you made. And just owning that is just a a great energy side of things because I think in our society, again, especially after the COVID times, it's very easy to blame somebody else Mm -hmm. for the challenges and for the things that are going wrong and all that stuff. Yeah, we could. I love it. Or we could work together to figure out the solution and get to step in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the guests the guests don't care uh, in a loving and nurturing kind of way. They really don't. Um, they would rather have their challenge solved by some great humans that care. And you do that. And again, more often than not, your business will start to go up. Your teamwork starts to go up. The, the morale starts to go up. And will you still have bad days and bad moments? Absolutely. But that's where... You, you throw in what I call the, the four progress questions, which what's working, what's not working, what have I learned and what will I do differently? And yep. love it. And you turn it into fascination. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, awesome. Just, just us talking about Zig. I'm like, uh, 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 or Jim Rohn on that one. Cause mm-hmm. Zig Ziglar, uh, one of the other ones that, that, uh, resonated with me when I was young was he said, um, you can have anything in life that, that you want, as long as you help enough other people get what they want first. Yes. I love that. Yeah. I heard that in 2000 and that became my mantra uh, for my career. And Mm -hmm. and I was going to do that for every employee, anybody that I had the chance to lead and do enough for them, do enough for the, 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 the staff and, or the, the guests, the clients, all that stuff. And Mm -hmm. sure enough, I'm living proof 20 years later to be you know, in a early retiree situation because yes. of that commitment, it the early mm-hmm. re- retiree and all that does not happen unless mm-hmm. you fully dive into that and live it at the highest of levels. Yes. And if you are a person in sales, which we all are yeah. uh, uh, thinking about selling ver- or not selling, um, serving versus selling, mm-hmm. Taking that philosophy in that in every aspect of that is going to serve you very well. I, yeah. I yes, I love that. Have you read the book Go Giver? Yes, yes. Yeah, I just read that. It's a cute little snack of a book. Yeah, yeah. Again, same kind of message about yeah. giving more value than you get and, yeah. and all that. So I love it. I love sharing little snack of books because I yeah. know our attention, there's lots of distractions in the world today. Absolutely. So those are real nice, easy ones to get through. Well, well Greg, as you know, each episode is this quick, juicy tip. I could 
sit here and do this with you all. I can do this for like a week straight. <laughs> we'll, do it, we'll do it again in the future if needed. Yeah, so. well, we're going to do, well, we're going to, we've got more to do though, but um, right we'll, we'll do a lot of this in the Grand Tetons when we go hiking in August. Yes. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Another positive energy outing. Um, but to uh, for a quick t tidbit of information for our uh, leaders to just energize themselves, maybe take this information back to their uh, huddles, their own huddles to motivate their teams. I know times are fascinating right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and this is to help people to be confident, be empowered, and to lead from the heart. And I know we usually focus on one. And I know the thing you're going to talk to us about is really encompassing all three of those. Yep. So uh, you want to tee it up? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, you, uh, uh, hey there, listeners. Uh, you, <laughs> heard, uh, Trippy and I here talk uh, or reference energy is everything quite a bit. And uh, I absolutely, absolutely believe that. I believe that life is an echo. The energy you put out to the world tends to come back. Um, and so if whining, complaining, negative energy is going out, that's exactly why it continues to come back. And so one of the biggest things we as humans must do, and I believe it must be your number one priority, and that's to manage and fill your energy tank. And what I mean by energy tank is you got to take care of yourself. You cannot give to others um, something that you're not giving to yourself. Uh, you can for short term, but then that's what's called burnout, frustration. I mean, all of the, the negative elements on a health side of things come into play when you're not taking care of yourself. And this is, please don't take that to the extreme when I say uh, your number one priority is to fill your energy tank. That's not 18 hours a day of spying, people. That is, uh, oh. that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Trippy's like, I'm out, I'm done. Um, it is it is uh, managing managing your schedule, managing your priorities, because I'm a big believer that it that life is not about time, it's about your priorities. You make your priorities um, in line and everything else takes care of itself. My priorities, I get up in the morning, tell my wife how much I love her, and then I take care of my health. I do my five to six mile walk every day. I do my reading every day. Um, I interact with my kids every day. And then I go on to my other priorities kind of stuff. It's You got to make sure that you're doing the things in your life that fill your energy tank. And so what I challenge everybody to do is just... Uh, uh, when you have a minute, sit down and write down 10 things that fill your energy tank, things that excite you, that make you come alive. Um, like me, it would be hiking in the Tetons. It would be mm -hmm. drinking barrel-aged imperial stouts. It would be listening to music. Um, absolutely love music. Uh, uh, reading books. Um, uh, sitting down with my my little four and a half pound Yorkie Jazz uh, mm -hmm. and snuggling with him. Hanging out with my uh, friends and family side of things. And so... I make sure that I'm very clear on those 10, 15, 20, I mean, 50 things that fill your energy tank. Mm -hmm. uh, a side note to that is when you do it um, to help expand your, your list, because some people are like, well, dude, I only got like seven, eight. Um, I will challenge you on that because there's things that some of them are short term. You know, I can listen to 30 seconds of an 80s song and I'm like, yeah, everything's awesome. <laughs> right. Um, or um, planning a trip, you know, which takes weeks uh, kind right. of stuff. So there's energy tank fillers that are short term and long term. So just keep mm -hmm. open to that. And but one then, thing that I, I recommend, oh, sorry, Brandon. No, no, one no, thing I recommend for leaders, just like what you're saying, is to have that list in your office right next to your laptop or where Absolutely. you work of, of maybe five to 10 things that you can do in the moment. You, you just had a uh, challenging, fascinating interaction with a guest. <laughs> and you know what? It, and, and we're the last people we take care of. We always go right to who I need to take care of. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you have that right in front of you, take a walk, call my mom, eat a cupcake. Yep. Yep. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. That is a very helpful tool to have that by you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, using that with the four progress questions I mentioned for me, mm -hmm. because when I'm at that frustration point, how for uh, how I can switch to that fascination is using those four progress questions because my head needs that. My head needs to go, okay, what's working right now? What's not working right now? Why is that? What am I learning here? And what will I do differently? And then fill your energy tank and then go do that thing. Um, yes. At least take it a step towards it. So identifying what fills your energy tank and know in your phases of life that changes. So uh, early career, mid career, later career, I mean, those things change. So uh, visiting those things on a regular basis is awesome. Um, and take it to your staff members, find out what fills their energy tank. 
I, mm -hmm. them as humans, the, the um, research says that us humans need recognition one time every seven days. So what are you doing to connect with your, your humans that you're around and recognizing them? If you know th that certain things fill their energy tank, then fill their energy tank. Do yeah. those kinds of things to be able to do that. On the flip side, be very, very, very clear. Also, write down the five to 10 things in your life that drain your energy tank. And so that you're, you're not blinded. Uh, it, it, most of them are your triggers. Most of them mm -hmm. are the things that hijack you and take you out. Going back to, it's not about time. It's about your priorities. One of the biggest challenges I see in humans. And again, this is per personally and professionally is distractions is social media is a distraction. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. 1% it, it, of the time it fills your energy tank, maybe 5% mm -hmm. sometimes. But 90 to 95% of media, social media specifically, is a distraction. And if you really look at it, more often than not, there's some fear hidden inside you that, that is holding you or, or pulling you into that distraction. And I'm guilty of it as much as anybody else. Yet I know the days that that I am absolutely dis disciplined to my priorities and my energy tank and all of that stuff, I have more time on my hands than I've ever dreamed of. So if you want to spend 20 minutes getting distracted, then you can do that. It's just, I just see so many people allowing the distractions to take them out, which it yes. doesn't, it, it takes them out, but it also drains your energy. I don't know about you, but if you get off of Facebook after 30 minutes or 20 minutes or 10 minutes, more often than not, you're, you're angry at the world. Um, yeah, or you're just angry at yourself for wasting yeah. yes. 45. What the hell? I just did. Yeah. And again, yeah. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying be conscious of what aware. It is you are doing. Yes, the awareness yes. in my in my heart acronym, H is humility, We're going back to be a student of life. E is the energy times execution. A is awareness. So pay attention to yourself and others. R is the relationship and trust is trust equals teamwork. And, and yep. you do those things on a regular basis. And there is absolutely nothing that would hold you back besides yourself, uh, mm -hmm. yourself and your team, but, it, or when you are working with yourself, that's going to rub off on everybody else. You're talking about energy fillers. You're talking about energy drainers. You open up a dialogue, you open up, a um, what's the, the verbiage? That's the word. Mm -hmm. it, it's a fancy word too. <laughs> verbiage, uh, uh, between your team going, you know what? My energy is drained right now. Can you guys help me out? Boom. The team is going to step up. They're going to help versus, acting like your energy isn't drained because <laughs> everybody feels it. Um, yes. One of my favorite quotes in the history of the world is Maya Angelou who said, people don't, you know, people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never ever forget how you made them feel. Yes. That is my definition of energy. Um, when you're yes. around, how do other people feel? Just please don't take that to the extreme where it's fake. It's ingenuine. It's all of that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Leaders do not, do not do this in your huddle. Do not look around at everybody and say, good job, good job, good job, good job, good job, good job to everybody. Make it personal. Make it, pull them aside. If you can, catch them doing things right in the moment mm -hmm. um, versus us as leaders, we spend a tremendous amount of time and we're really good at finding what's wrong uh, right. and catching people doing what's wrong. I'm yeah. not saying don't do that. I'm just saying just manage your energy in regards to how you go about doing that. And mm -hmm. approach it from a question standpoint versus a, a statement standpoint. Again, turn your frustration into fascination. Yes, like, tell wow, me about what yes. is it. What is it, Trippy, that made you do that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm fascinated. I am fascinated by what just transpired there. <laughs> So you are me? so awesome. I love you so much, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're going to be going over today because I could, again, just, I want to treat all of you with this awesomeness that's in front of us. I love you so much, Brandon. So but good. as you know, I am the director of fun. Yes, you are. <laughs> And so I baked up some special fun for you today. I usually do a all right. question or whatnot, but I have a trivia game for you. Uh -oh. And it's all around one of your favorite things, beer. Nice. <laughs> nice. Okay. So I'm going to pop up on the stream because this is a podcast okay. and it's also YouTube. So for anybody out there just listening, I'm going to pop up a question. I'm going to read it. And then Brandon can try to answer it. Now, uh, I, you know, I don't know if you're going to know these questions quite honestly, but we're going to have some fun with it. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Question number one. In which year was the beer can introduced? Oh. A, 
1905, B, 1920, C, 1925, or D, 1930? Uh, I'm going to go with 1905 because beer is the best thing or one of the best things ever. And I hope that it had as much time as it could have in the, in the, in the can side of things. However, let me rethink that. They would have bottled it earlier. Um, I would say don't rethink it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go. Yeah, again, trust your gut, right? Trust your energy. I'm going with the 1905. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got a big yes, Brandon. <laughs> All right, one for four. Okay, question number two. What is the world's biggest beer brand? A, Bud Light, B, Budweiser, C, Snow, or D, what do we say that was? Qingdao. 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Budweiser. Budweiser, that yeah. was a very good guess. However, it was a trick one because I only say that was a trick one because I never even heard of snow. And it's snow. Yeah. Wow. Ever, I never heard well, of snow. There's been there and and there's been so many people buying different things because even Budweiser, Bud Light, that's under, I think it's called Imbev now. Uh they they own like Goose Island down there in Chicago and stuff. Yeah. So everybody, you know, some of the smaller uh, micro brews, all that stuff have been eaten up by, by the big dogs. So, wow. Yeah. Okay. I learned some, I am fascinated. <laughs> <That's> fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Okay. Question number three, non-alcoholic, non-alcoholic -alco beers typically contain as much alcohol as what piece of fruit? A, a banana, B, pineapple, C, pear, D, kiwi. I, I'm on the wise pineapple. I got to go with pineapple. <laughs> I love that you did. And I thought for sure it was going to be pineapple, but it's banana. <laughs> no good. No good. I know. And I thought, oh, he's going to, th this is a trick too, because he's going to think it's pineapple because I put it up there. <laughs> One of the best things to do with pineapple is just take uh, Malibu and just, yeah, mm. just, just, yeah, just. Just take a, a whole pineapple chunks and just, yeah, soak it and just. Yeah, not Malibu, enjoy. Captain. Yes. Well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Four for four. Here we go. Number four, which were these, which of these are not a type of hop? A, Millennium, B, Pilgrim, C, Tomahawk, or D, Victory? I'm going to go with Millennium. It is Victory. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know any of those answers. Yeah. Well, obviously I didn't either. <laughs> and before we even started this podcast, I asked Brandon how I even pronounced Qingdao. <laughs> yeah, and, I didn't know how to pronounce that beer. And I, I hope somebody can correct us on that too, because we're doing yes. the best we can. Yes. All right. We so did. now I have a fun one really quick. All okay, right. It's your birthday. Where are you? I, uh, oh, see, I... I, I have to go because uh, I was just thinking about this is uh, Goose Island uh, oh. enjoying a Bourbon County Stout uh, craft beer. I uh, yeah that it, it's it's there or in uh, the Tetons. So okay, uh, those are two my my two places and and usually when I'm hiking in the Tetons, uh, I bring a Bourbon County Stout with me um, for my my uh, achievement beer uh, in the pack. So. I love it. Okay. So I was going to say, where are you, who are you with, and what beer are you drinking? So the only one left is who are you with? Uh, in the Tetons, it would be you and, and my hiking clan. Um, and uh, at the Goose Island, it would be my beautiful wife and then friends. I love it. I love it so much. All right, Brandon, tell everybody where they can get more of you and all that good juju you you give out and where they connect and where, where they can get your book. Yeah. Um, positive energy guy, uh, dot com is the best place. I mean, I have a blog there that once a month, I just 10 things that I've learned, uh, which are 80% of them are real time kind of stuff. And some of them are just mm -hmm. historic because I can't, or I've committed to, to not share everything that I've learned uh, all the time. It's just, uh, there's some historical ones that still pop up. Um, but, uh, positive energy guy on Facebook is a big following. Um, and so there's 25,000 or close to this stuff, which is crazy because that's just a platform where I can connect. I mean, I, I was telling my wife, uh, a post on, I think it was Sunday or whatever has reached 50,000 people kind of oh, stuff. It's, just, it's a reminder that just put good energy out to the world. I, I, I've always just been a person that uh, just believes in leaving things and people better than I found them. And so, you, you do that as much as you can. And again, it goes back to uh, Zig's saying of just 
just help other people. And more yeah. often than not, you create a lot of freedom for yourself. So positive energy guy um, and Brandon at positive energy guy.com is email. So please reach out anything I can do. If you want some books or I'd be happy to sign them yes. um, to you, to your team, just send me an email. We'll, we'll figure out uh, uh, bulk pricing or I think even in my, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Mine is signed. <laughs> um, I, I, I do with a lot of organizations, you know, group, group, group pricing and or uh, if you're ordering a single book, I think uh, if I remember right, um, the code is student um, for a $10 book. So um, oh, awesome. Uh, give you, you 15 bucks off or whatever it is. I'll so, put that in the show notes too. It's code is student. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Cause awesome. I have a couple hospitality programs, um, Northern Arizona, uh, and UW stout, their hospitality programs have used my book as part of their curriculum and stuff. So it's, awesome. it's fun to be able to get the, a book like that in the hands of the students before, before the industry and the world, uh, come at them from a different angle. Hundred percent, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Brandon, you know I end every huddle with great energy because energy is everything. Absolutely. So I know that you said that our uh, our phrase of the day is going to be just that: energy is everything. So, we're, everybody, wherever you are in this world, if you're in the bathroom, the car, the lobby, your office, it doesn't matter. I want you all to put your hand in with us. All right. And on three, Brandon, count us out, and our phrase is going to be: energy is everything. One, two, three, energy's everything. Thank you, everybody. Brandon, thank you so much for being here. I love you, my friend. And I can't love wait to hike you in the Tetons. Woo! Yeah, can't wait to see you. Yes, bye-bye.